All right, Brandon. Ah. <laughs> hey guys, it's Brandon again. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make 52% a year on your money. You can do more, you can be, uh, you can do more and you can also do less. It all depends on your risk tolerance. Last year, I personally made over 72% on my cash. So guys, all I'm going to ask you to do is this. Please like, share, and subscribe to this content. So let's jump right into it. I don't have one of those expensive fancy boards, so here we go. So this is a bank, right? Now, yeah, I drew something so y'all don't get bored. I hope it looks nice. But if you uh, know me, you know one thing that I'm a very big advocate for saving money. And the reason why I like to save money is for two things. It shows financial discipline and it allows me to invest. Savings is the foundation of how I've been able to create my wealth and become financially free. If you have money saved, it can do a lot. But many, but one thing you should also know is this, and one thing we preach here at Factory 7 is that cash flow is king. If your money is not consistently bringing in more money, your money is dead. This is an example of this. Say that you have a bank, you put your money into it, right? The bank is going to give you like 1%. My bank personally gives me like 0.001%. But I'm giving the banks a benefit of the, uh, benefit of the doubt. They give you 1%. Now, say that bank right, offers you one of the garbage products like a CD or some trash like that. Now they give you 2% to lock your money up for three years. But look at this. There's this thing called inflation. And for those who do not know what inflation is, inflation is that thing that continually kills your spending and buying power. Typically, inflation is about 3% a year. We have had high inflationary years where it goes up 4 plus percent, but typically it's around 3% a year. So what does, the, what does this mean? If you put $100,000 in the bank, it's gonna lose 3% after one year. So that $100,000 is now worth $97,000. Imagine doing that for two years. That same $100,000, now 97,000, pardon me, is gonna lose 3% of its value. And that is exactly how inflation works. It eats off your spending power every single year. But as I said before, I'm big into saving. And the reason why is because we need cash on hand. And there's three reasons why I believe we need cash on hand. Number one is the most basic financial advice ever. And grandma says it all the time is a rainy day fund. Look here. I'm a very positive person. I believe the universe will always look out for me. I do as much good as I potentially can. So that good always comes back to me. But... Life happens at the same time. Sometimes stuff just happens and people have no money sitting there. If you have some cash sitting there, it will help alleviate a lot of people's situation. Look what happened in 2020. People were reckless with their finances. Not saying everyone, but a lot of people were reckless with their finances, bad spending habits. And when a situation like that come up, they couldn't even feed their family. The government disrespecting Americans, giving them $600. What the hell is that going to do? Rainy day fund. Number two, investment opportunity. I'm just going to put the word op. I don't, don't think I could spell opportunity. It's such a big word. But investment opportunity. So for example, right now the stock market is a bloodbath. One of my favorite companies, beside Factory 7 LLC, Apple is down $139. dollars i picked up a lot of shares because I had that money to invest. Same thing that happened in the previous crash we had. Apple dipped to 120, and guess what? I was able to buy a crap ton more shares. Now, the shares ran up. That is what having cash do. And number three is peace of mind. I am a big believer in having peace of mind. When I have cash in the bank, well, I always have cash in the bank. But when there's cash in the bank, you're going to feel so much better. And when you feel better... The universe brings better things to you. You attract better things. So that is the whole purpose of why we need cash in the bank. But back to my point, we are here to create wealth. We are here to be cash flow investors. So here we go. 
As mentioned before, the stock market is the easiest place to create wealth. I love real estate investing. I love building my business. But the stock market, once you know what you're doing, it's so easy. It is ridiculous. I personally could sell all my real estate ventures, um, stop building my business, and literally live off the stock market because it's that easy. It is just that people are financially uneducated and are not willing to take certain risks. If you're willing to do that, you will be financially free in no time. So here we go. This video is a follow-up video to a video that I did a few months ago when I said how I make six grand a week in the stock market. But in that video, I was owning stocks. This example, you do not even have to own stocks. You literally just have to have the cash equivalent, and I'll write that down in capital words, cash equivalent, it's too long, cash equivalent to buy the stocks. That is it. So for example, say that you have 100K, And then somebody else, I'll do this because you're doing a contract, has a thousand shares of a company. So this right here is the shares. You have the cash equivalent. This person has the, the shares. Now, let's say the shares is uh, stock SEX. Oh, wow. Um, okay. You know what? It's... You know what? Listen, my mom and the church are still praying for me, so bear with me. So stock SCX. Now, stock SCX is going for $110 currently on the market. But this person who has the 1,000 shares bought the shares at 90. So if they were to sell, they would have made a $20 profit. But they do not want to sell as yet. So they're saying this to themselves. I can use this person as a leverage. So now, say that the stock market is doing well, it's running up, but this person is just a little bit wary and they want to protect their gain. Remember, they bought the stock at 90. Now remember, you can only remember this in options, Write this down also, as mentioned in the previous video. In options, you can only do 100 share equivalents at a time, which means you can't do 110, I mean 110, 105. It got to be in multiples of 100. So this person must be willing to sell you the shares at a strike price that will allow you to afford at least 100 shares, right? So say... This person now is looking at you as, you know what? I would do a contract with you at 100. So they're like, the strike price is $100 per share. Now, this person is, now, now remember this. This person is doing this because they're like, they paid 90, the stock is at 110, but they want to protect their gains. So they're willing to sell you the stock at $100 in the event the stock falls below 100. So if the stock falls below 100, they can sell the, even if the stock goes to 80, they can sell the stocks to you for 100 and still walk away with a $10 profit. So they're basically paying you, this person who owns the shares is basically paying you to buy the shares from them. Now look at this. $100 per share is the strike price. You have $100,000. Now remember, you always divide the cash equivalent you have to the $100 strike price. I mean, to the, to the strike price. So $100,000 divided by 100, that means you can buy 1,000 shares. And you can go into contract for as many shares as you want up to 1,000. So that means, remember, multiples of 100. 100, 200, 300. But say you decide, you know what, I'll do everything at 1,000. So this person who owns the shares is willing to give you 
for each share, each multiple, each contract in which you is it, it, is willing to give you one dollar per share, basically. So you are gonna get times that by a dollar, one thousand dollars. So this person just gave you one thousand dollars to go into a contract with them. Now look at this. Say the market keeps returning good, and stock SEX closes out. So say this contract is from Monday to Friday. And by the end of Friday, the stock closes at 120. What happens to this contract? It's null and void because the stock closed higher and you keep your money. You don't have to buy the shares from them because the stock closed out above the agreed upon strike price is $100. So you walk away with $1,000. Imagine doing that every single week. That's $52,000 on your, um, your money.